tell you, I didn't realize anyone was there. How long since your last... I'm going to kill someone. I didn't hear that. I haven't got a choice. Killing's the only way. I suppose, uh, crazy thoughts flash through most of our minds at some point in our lives. We don't mean them. And the sooner we put them out of our heads, the better. No choice! I told you! Pray for me, Father. Salva me von Spietatis. I... I don't think you mean that. To take another's life is the gravest of mortals. <laughs> Don't just leave the bloody thing there. I'm late, you cow. Mm, he's a good lad. Hm. He won't be doing any more damage to my malt whiskies. Yeah, that's true. I'm on a limited offer myself. <laughs> you daft. You're fitter than I am. <laughs> that was never saying very much, Jack, even 15 years ago. Oh, that's true. Inspector Frost, I thought I saw you. Uh, yes. Um... Rosalie Martin. Rosalie Martin, of course. My husband's buried here. I was I was just putting some new flowers on his on his grave. So the uh, chief superintendent Fairclough, uh, ex chief superintendent. Hello. I meant what I said. <coughs> Sorry. Getting in touch. Oh. I thought perhaps you'd like to come to dinner. Um. Well, that would be uh, very nice. Why not? Next Friday? Uh, um, Friday. Th that, oh, yes, thank you, that'd be very nice. Right, bye. Yes, th thank you again, bye. I might have got the wrong end of the stick, but I thought you were shacked up with a certain kitty I of fond remembrance. I'm only staying there, aren't I? Oh, pardon me. It's an easy mistake to make. <laughs> no, it's just that I met this, um, you know, this Rosalie Martin. You know, I was working on a case and, um, you know, I met her and uh, she came into the station to thank me and she <coughs> she you know she brought in a cake well, it takes a lot for a woman to bake a cake these days <laughs> you must be fitter than you look mm. hey hey what do you mean by that a week late with bristol computers parts don't look at me i'm not but I am looking at you to get down to Bristol, take Jerry Ryan out for a meal and keep on the right side of him. I can't just drop everything. Monday. This afternoon, James. This isn't the time to put our best customers back up. Whatever you've got on, the business comes first. Come on, Alec. I'll tell him you're on your way. Mr. Park. 
Richard. I'm sorry, I completely forgot. Well, if another time. Nope. I can find half an hour. Come inside. You're finished here, Sheridan. And you won't just be out of a job. I'm gonna hit you so hard that pretty face will be marked for life. Jack? Good holiday. Cool. I never want to see another jug of sangria for the rest of my life. <laughs> <sighs> Mullet's been on the ball during my absence, and he looked. Mm -hmm. Memo on the amount of soap being used in the washrooms. Oh. That's Hornrim Harry's delicate way of referring to the carsy. Mm -hmm. Well, if there is a Mr. Big smuggling it out, it ain't me. So stick there. Oh, he'd never suspect you of nicking soap. You're not taking the washroom, I hope, out of a superior officer, ex-Sergeant Toulon. CID. Mm. Yeah, who should I say? Ah, it's a Rosalie Martin, Jackson. Can she have your phone number? Is that the Rosalie Martin? Shh, 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 shh. Yes, yes, yes. Go on, isn't it your shout for the tea? Hello? Yes, it's me, yes. Um, no, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, sorry, it was my fault. I forgot. Yeah, my number is, um... Nothing else you fancy. Will you get the bloody tea? Sorry, I just don't know what to... Don't you change your mind now, sweetheart? He knows! Well, of course he knows. Are you going to get this Chinese? I asked you to go half an hour ago. You weren't watching that. I'm on my way. Are you going to tell me what's wrong? There's nothing wrong. You've hardly spoken since you came in. You haven't heard a word I've said! Well, what do you want? A meal or an argument? I can't do both. Oh, we'll eat! First.
Hello? Get stuffed, sweetheart. You know what I want, and you know what happens if I don't get it. After the break, tonight's late movie is Gunfight at the OK Corral. Good night. I'm going to have an early night. Yeah, OK, right then. I'm going to finish this and start and watch the film, mate. Right. <clears throat> Just don't wake me up. Okay. Unless, of course... The thing is, uh, Kitty, I've... Well, I've got to go back to the flat tomorrow. Sort things out, you know? You know the rules. You do what you like, when you like. Just one request. No. Yeah. Video the film. Got time for coffee? Oh, no thanks. George Toulon's waiting. I've got more than two cups. Yeah, I know, but you know how it is. You start doing that, the next thing you know, they'll want the odd weekend off. All the cars and all the world, you had to bump into mine. And that's the worst Peter Lorre impression I've ever heard. It's poker. Oh, yeah. Poker. If you need me, just whistle. Yeah.
probable cause of death. Yeah, well, she's got white foam in her mouth, so she drowned. A rough guess as to the time. Well, it couldn't have been all that long, could it? Body hasn't blown up. Rigor mortis wearing off, is it? Any chance of you getting on with your job, Inspector, and leaving me to get on with mine? Yeah, all right. Have you noticed her hands? Very expensive training and many years' experience lead me to hazard the opinion that she has one attached to each arm. Really? All right. Carry on. Oh, well, come on, George. Just here, sir. It's the same material as her dress. This is probably where she jumped. Well, photograph it, bag it, then see if forensic can make a match. No doubt of that. There won't be many of what she's wearing in Denton. You couldn't afford one, sir, even on an inspector's salary. Really? I'll have you know that this jacket was handmade in Savile Row. Not for me, I must admit, but it was handmade. Well, the car belongs to the Mrs. Jeanette Barr. Date of birth is the 15th of the 4th, 64. This is the right age. Yeah. But she got the right clothes to go with the right car and all, which... Mm. She wasn't attacked? Doesn't look like it. I wonder how tall she was, does it, sir? No, it doesn't, but I'll soon find out. Ooh. Suicide. Possibility. I'll tell you one thing, mm -hmm. she didn't come for a swim. No towel. Dexter Ken. Yeah, uh, her husband, Mr. James Barr. Uniform are trying to get hold of him. All right. Washing up liquid. Well, given the circumstances of Mrs. Barr's death and the fact that Mr. Barr seems to be missing, I think we've got no alternative. Uh, Jack, Jack, Jack. What? Uniform has spoken to the neighbours. He was here this morning. You don't have to do that.
told you and what the hell are you doing in my house? They're police officers, Mr. Barr. Denton CID. We have been trying to contact you. Where's my wife? Can you think of any reason why your wife might have wanted to take her own life? Well, she wasn't beyond a crazy gesture. She uh, took an overdose once, after a row. It wasn't enough to, you know, just a way. The answer's no. Well, look, it's probably not the way you do these things, but I need a drink. Yeah, all right. So, what time did you get in last night? Midnight, half fast. I've been drinking. Pubs? Clubs? Pubs. I did a lot of walking around trying to think. What are you going to find out sometime? Jeanette was seeing this bloke. Hmm. And you thought that she was with him? I see. When did you see her last? Yesterday morning, nine o'clock. I was off to work. We didn't really speak. She seemed, um, all right. I mean, we weren't exactly asking after each other's health. You were working all day, Saturday. Yeah, we're going through a bit of a hectic period, all hands on deck. So when you came home and found she wasn't there, weren't you worried that something might be wrong? No. Well, why should it? She couldn't stop telling me how happy she was about the new man in her life. That she was going to leave me. Why would I think that she was going to go out and kill us? This man, do you know who he is? Richard Sheridan. He's a designer, doing some work for us. And did she say that she would be staying the night with him? No. She must have been. Maybe he dumped her. I told you Jeanette was capable of some pretty daft stunts so she couldn't get her own way. She's hardly likely to go and jump off a bridge just to seek attention, though, is she? Look, it doesn't make any sense to me either. I've told you that. <sighs> There's not much more. I don't know what she'd been doing, where she'd been. The last few weeks, the only conversation's been a couple of screaming rows about Sheridan and money. It doesn't seem important, now. Right. I assume you'll be staying at home. If you intend leaving Denton, you will inform us, won't you? You see, we've met before, Mr. Barr. I don't know how to tell you this. But you'll recognise me eventually. Better now. I was one of the investigating officers ten years ago when your first wife, Harriet, was killed. Anyway, there was a break-in at the bar's house. They lived at Shepley then. Mm -hmm. It was a vicious little sod by the name of Michael King. Mm -hmm. No, it was a bit of a pa left here. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he was a bit of a panicker. He thought the house was empty, but lo and behold, Mrs. Bar Number One comes out of the bedroom. Mm -hmm. So she ends up with three broken ribs and a ruptured spleen. Did he go down for it? Yeah, well, he's still inside now. Mm. His mother's still running a campaign to prove he was innocent. Any doubts at the time? No, not really. <laughs> but you didn't like James Barr? No, well, he didn't lose much sleep then. Doesn't seem to be much different now, does he?
Did Mrs. Barr show any signs of depression at all, Mr. Chairman? No, she was never a candidate for that. Jackie, please. Oh, just wait, Jackie. Jackie, please listen to me. I won't be interrupting again, Inspector. Jackie, please. Wasn't there another way? We don't investigate people's death by appointment, sir. Now, did you see Mrs. Barr yesterday? No, no, I hadn't seen her. Jackie, please. Jackie, please listen. Uh, before you go, Mrs. Sheridan, could you tell me what time your husband was here last night? Look, apart from going out for half an hour for a Chinese takeaway... But you don't expect me to lie for you as well. I don't know how long it was out. At least two hours! Jackie! Look, I was here! Jackie! Jackie, come on. Jackie, surely you could bloody tell you them. You were screwing Jeanette Burr. Why should I help you? Jackie, now look, listen to me. It was a mistake. Oh, yes, I'm my mistake for thinking your brain was in your oh. head. Now I know how you beat off designers who are clearly more talented than you. The inspector would appreciate it if you were to come back inside, sir. Why did you do this? Jeanette jumps in the river and my own brother thinks I must have pushed her. I'm not saying that. Look, we're all in shock, James. Well, Inspector Frost isn't. And he's looking at me like I must be guilty of something. Nonsense. No one is accusing you of anything. She killed herself. That's what the police told you. When I heard the news, I thought you were still in Bristol. Oh, God, will you shut up about Bristol? I didn't go. I wasn't there. She'd, um, she just told me that she was screwing that bastard Sheridan. Come on. Whatever happened, whatever made her, it's not your fault. You should have told me about Sheridan straight away. James. You are telling me everything now. Alice? James? It's Father Sullivan. Mr. Barr, I just heard him. Sorry, Peter. Okay. You come in. Father. I'm Alec Barr, James's brother. I'd hoped he wasn't on his own. When someone drowns, especially in a filthy river like that, you expect to find them grasping mud, weeds and so on, anything that's in the river. Inadvertent action in the death throes. Now, lack of it doesn't mean anything in itself, but she had been in the mud on the riverbed. Not even dirty fingernails. Oh, really? Mm. No question she drowned. But I noticed a particularly distinct smell from the water in the lungs and stomach. Forensic will give us the analysis, but it's a highly perfumed soap of some kind. Bubble bath, bath oil, a great deal sweeter than river water. I imagine she died in the bath. Pray for our sister Jeanette, who has died in Christ. Raise her at the last day to share in the glory of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, we weren't exactly doing the housekeeping. Jeanette had a row with the cleaner, told her to sod off. So what if the bedroom's in a state? And what about all the new clothes that have been ripped up? And the photograph you and your wife smashed? Yeah, well, I, 
I, I thought the cow's been out spending my money again, so I, I tore them up. And the mirror? It's my mirror. And was Mrs. Barr there while you were having this violent spree? I didn't see her all day. I told you that. Well, it's obvious your house hasn't been cleaned for a long period. Weeks. Our marriage was breaking up. It does seem rather odd, though, doesn't it? That the one room in the house that was cleaned very thoroughly, very recently, was the ensuite bathroom. She wasn't incapable of wiping the bath. Let's see. Well, a preliminary examination of a bottle of bubble bath found in there matches the contents of your wife's stomach and lungs. She was drowned, but not in the river. She drove there? No, no. Somebody drove her there. She was dried and she was dressed and she was driven to the river. The killer wanted to make it look like suicide, but the bruises left by his hands, where he pushed her head under the water in the bath, are still visible. She died in her own house. You were in that house yesterday, arguing violently. All right, but I didn't go back. Do you know what I think? I think that she threatened to tell your wife what was going on between you. And you had to stop her doing that at all costs. Hmm? Not at all costs. Look, I didn't kill her. I was at home when I said I was. If you just tell Jackie what's happening, she'll tell you. Why? Is her opinion of what time you got in last night somehow dependent about what happens in here? No, of course it is. Yes? Jack, you got a minute. Yes? What is it? Jackie Sheridan's statement. She's in the interview room by reception. All right. Okay. Thank you. Is this a true version of events? It is. Right. Well, I won't be pursuing the matter of wasting police time, but perjury would be a very different thing. If I felt I could get him locked up for anything, I would. And it would almost be worth risking a spell in Holloway for the satisfaction. Almost. But not quite. I see. All right, George. Show Mrs. Sheridan the way out, will you? Okay. Jack. Yeah? Strange one just been on the phone. A priest. Oh, yeah? What do you want to do? Issue me with my last rites, did he? A bloke walked into a confession, told me he was going to kill someone. Oh, really? What did he do? Told him not to, gave him three Hail Marys. <laughs> no, he said he met you briefly at James Bars today. Father Sullivan's his name. All right, you're free to go. Well, I don't need any of this, then. Just a minute, Mr. Sheridan. This case is far from over. And if I were you and I wanted to prove that I wasn't in a lady's bedroom or bathroom, I'd take all the help that I could get. Do you think this man was James Barr? I'm sorry, but I don't know. I was trying to take in what he was saying, get him to talk. I'd barely started and he'd gone. But you can't say it wasn't James Barr? No. I can't say that either. And even if I could, I don't think I'd... This isn't easy for me. 
there's, there's something about what happened. Ach, it's probably just all an appalling coincidence. But you don't think so. You see, in my job, coincidences are little pieces of evidence that you can't explain. And when you put them all together, you start to get an explanation. So, did the voice sound familiar? I keep going over it. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. See, I'm fairly new to the parish. And anyway, putting a face to a sin isn't why you hear confession. It's not what you're thinking. Mm. It's the way I'd be thinking. Anyway, this man, our would-be killer, is he a regular? I mean, does he come in once a week to confess to a murder or an armed robbery? He meant what he said. I suppose if you did know who he was, that would present a greater problem, wouldn't it? Because you wouldn't be able to tell me the secrecy of the confessional. It's a bit like that film. That one with, uh, what's his name, Gregory Peck. And I'm wasting your time. No, 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 Father, no, you're not. But, I mean, you must get the odd nutter in here. Doesn't you? I mean, we always do. Every time we get a big murder, we have a queue right the way around the block. They all want to confess. I know something about the truth, Inspector. I know what it sounds like. And if I'm not wasting your time, you're wasting mine. Yes, well, um... Look, do you think that you could write it down for me, what he said, word for word? Yeah, I'll try. That's all right, is it? You're not under oath. You're not sworn to secrecy or anything like that, eh? Well, that oath can't justify a priest refusing to help in a murder inquiry. If there is any connection between what happened in the confessional and Jeanette Barr's death, then I should have been able to say something, to do something to stop it. You just concentrate on trying to remember what the man said. The connection, if there is any, you'll find it eventually. Montgomery Clift. Sorry, do what? Montgomery Clift, not Gregory Peck. Ah, yes. Yeah, you're right. Do you remember the title of the film? I Confess. There was definitely someone in the garden. It seems that a man stood here for some time, apparently watching the kitchen. There's several very good prints that Sokol have taken casts from. What? I reckon these were done yesterday, didn't they? Well, there was very heavy rain on Friday night, so anything earlier wouldn't be here. Oh. And just up here, sir, is where they think he came over. There's a gate at the back, normally locked. And that satellite dish would have hidden him from the house. The forensic are finished up here, sir. Right. James. James. <clears throat> Inspector Frost. What now? I'd like you to come down to the station, sir, so we can continue our conversation about the night your wife died. I'll have George Myerson there as soon as you arrive. Oh, yeah? Who's that? Our solicitor. Oh, oh, very good. Uh, come on, George. Get Mr. Barr's shoes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I went to the house in the afternoon. You know I did. That's when I saw Sheridan. Oh, you climbed over the fence in the afternoon. You could easily have done it at night. Well, I didn't. We've got two sightings of a vehicle answering the description of your car that night, right place, right time. I wasn't there. I didn't go back again. 
Why didn't you tell us that you saw Mr. Sheridan? Why did you wait for us to prove that it was you that was in the garden? I thought it best not to be near the place. Dumb. But once I'd said it, I thought that if I'd changed my story... Look, I wasn't thinking. My wife's just died. Well, I've been through the evidence at considerable length. And I can find no satisfactory answers as to where you were or what you were doing at the time that your wife was killed. If you're innocent, you don't need an alibi. Well, we'll let the jury make that decision. Shall we? Uh, two of them. Look, um, are you sure there's soap in the ladies? Yes, I'm sure, sir. Look, sir, we found tyre tracks that match James Barr's car. We also found footprints in the garden and some on the other side of the garden gate that match a pair of shoes found in his house. Now, he said that he wasn't anywhere near the house all day. So we showed otherwise. Yes, there's extensive evidence, but nothing that actually places James Barr at the scene of death. It's circumstantial. It's very circumstantial. I can't see any jury throwing that out. The Barrs are a powerful family, Jack. They'll be buying in some expensive legal advice. It wasn't helpful to break into the house or to take them out of the pub. I shan't be using the conversation in the pub, will I? Um, hmm? If Barr's lawyers can find any way to question how this case has been handled, then they'll make something of it. They'll also fight very hard for bail. They'll probably get it. Well, that's a good idea. Hmm? Well, he's unstable. We could keep an eye on him. And harassment will help no one. All right, go ahead, charge him. Good. But it is the other matter, of course. Mm -hmm. The death of Barr's first wife. Yes, that had been on my mind, too. I don't know much about it, but I get a letter every couple of months from the mother of the man convicted of the murder. It's Michael King, isn't it? Yes, I get those too. Actually, my old governor, Charlie Fairclough, he got the best. Elsie King dropped about a tonne of manure on his front lawn. She seems to have accused everyone in the county of corruption, even the chief constable. And now, the murdered woman's husband is to be charged with killing his second wife. Think about it, Jack. Harriet Barr was killed by a burglar. We had an excellent case, and he was sent down. Well, I hope you're right. Otherwise, you've put the wrong man away. For ten years. Tonight. Yes, yes. No, uh, eight thirty. I'm looking forward to it. Good. Bye. All right. I'll see you then. I can't think in a tidy room. Yes, it's true. Sometimes I walk round and round in here and suddenly, I don't know what it is, it's something, an idea of something scratching at the back of my mind, and I can almost smell my way to the right file. Really? Oh, I always thought that was mice. You can't smell what's in a computer. Oh, true. Marvellous. Well, I've got a rare treat for you. The Shetley Archives, Michael King, ten years ago, should smell like old camembert by now. Mm. Well, come on, where do we start? It's all in date order. After a fashion. <laughs> yeah, here, yeah, I'll put some of your seats. Oh, I remember yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Not only old files being reactivated, eh, Jack? Well, go on, what do you mean? Oh, I've been long past active for years. I'd put you down the same. <laughs> Look, if people in this station stuck their noses into their work half as much as they stuck their noses into other people's business, Hornrim Harry's success rate would be on the Richter scale. Where is it? Yeah, here you are. That lot. Oh, come on, you must be joking. And if you're not back in a fortnight, I'll send down a sniffer dog. Emergency on the bottom front. Bit of a football casualty. You're pissed. <laughs> yeah, I just needed to. What you need is a way to persuade a court that you didn't kill your bloody wife. That's what we all need. And Alec can't do it for you on his own. Look, I'll get my head around it tomorrow. It's not been easy for you. Oh. Everything's easy for you. It's not for us. What do you think all this is going to do to Simon and Lucy? You might not have produced your own children, but you could think about ours. James, we're all upset. Fiona doesn't mean it. Yes, I do. Fiona, we must stick together as a family. That's what matters. But try and imagine how James is feeling. Don't you ever get sick of apologising for him. Bag doesn't give us much. There's plenty of bills. Clothes mostly. Hotel. And there is a diary. No, oh, yeah. Any revelations? No, she didn't write down much. There's a few initials. Sometimes shadowed them. Along with the initials of a hotel. Sometimes just the hotels. BA for Bedford Arms. It's a place near Oxford. The hotel bills from there. Sheridan says that's where they went. Yeah, well. Far enough away not to be noticed by anyone else. Mm. Is that it? Well, the hotel bills for a meal in a room. The only odd thing is, it's dated ten days before the murder. Mm. And Sheridan said he hadn't seen her for three weeks. Right. All right, get round there and get it sorted. Bar's lawyers are going to use Sheridan to cast doubt on our evidence. You tell him that his wife's not interested in how many times he was at it, just that he was at it. I want his story straight. Mm. Oh, by the way, if I don't see you later, have a good evening. Is that a pointed remark? I don't know what you mean. Good. Because if I get one more knowing bloody look from anyone in this station, I'm going to recommend your transfer to uniform. Charlie? Jack Frost? Fine. No, fine. How are you? Listen, I've got to have a word with you. Father, will you hear my 
confession. I was just about to lock up. I've got to talk to someone. CID, plain detective. Ah, so what sort of things do you detect, Jack? Stolen cars? Burglaries? Well, you name it, I do it. I don't guarantee to catch anyone, though. Unfortunately, that's all too true, isn't it? I beg your pardon. Well, we're told how hard the police work, but all we ever hear is no resources. Yeah, well... And when the people get caught, the judges always seem to be on the side of the criminal. Why, even if you try to protect yourself, you're the one who's most likely to end up in jail. We're not even safe in our own homes now. No, that's true, especially if you consider rape or murder. <laughs> there you go. Even the police admit it. Yeah, do you realise that most women are raped by people they know? And most people are murdered by people they know. So, statistically, you're safer with a complete stranger. Discipline and complaints. Open up. Now! What are you doing to my guests, Jack? No one's drinking. Well, they've all brought their cars. You should have warned them in advance that I was a copper. Then, of course, we might have been alone. Uh, would you get me some more orange juice in the fridge? Oh. Yes, ma'am. Oh, there we are. Thank you. Oh, dear. This is no way to do it. I should have known better. What? Well, I wanted to see you on my own. To talk. Not about anything in particular, but without... Oh, I don't know. Without feeling there were things about myself I couldn't say. But I lost my nerve and invited. It was like looking up the recipe for disaster and doubling the quantities. Well then. Well um, next time, cut down on the invitations. Mm. I wanted you to carve. Well, yes, of course. Right. <clears throat> You were getting me excited, that is. Where is it? I'm a bleep. Oh, I don't believe this. Wind down a bit, lads. Oh, but come on, shut up. Stop now. What's your name, Paul? Martin, get rid of them. Put him in M3. Oh, I'll just solicit solicitor. Ah, you'll get a solicitor. All of them, Craig, get him a hand. All right, what's going on? I've got an urgent call. Discipline and complaints, what can you have an hour ago? I tried to get hold of Mr. Mullet. Ah, that's what it's about. It's about the soap they've caught up with him at last. Jack, they're in your office. Inspector Frost, we've met once before. All right, cut the introductions. What's this all about? I'm Detective Superintendent Bailey. This is D.I. Moore. We're investigating a number of matters relating to CID at the old Shepley station during 1985 and 6. One of the cases concerns the murder of Harriet Barr. Strangely, the files are on your desk. I've just charged James Barr with the murder of his second wife. I'm in the middle of an investigation, all right? So, get out of my office. This is my investigation. Precisely the other way round. You are suspended from duty, effective immediately. You will surrender your warrant card. You will leave this office and this station. You will talk to no one and take nothing with you. You will make yourself available for interviews as and when required. Oh. 
Inspector, I talked to James Barr last night. He came in for confession. Oh, well, I hope he feels better. Did he confess to the murders of both Mrs. Barr's, or was it just the most recent one? Still, I don't suppose he mentioned the first one, as he was absolved last time round. I'm trying to help. I listened to him talk about his marriages, his job, his family, all kinds of stuff. He's not had it as easy as you think. And he's not a man with murder in his heart. He's a killer. Maybe twice. Anyway, if he needs a character reference, I'll send his solicitors round to see you, shall I? Here's the confession. The man in the confessional, you wanted me to write it down? Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Thank you. Listening to James last night in the confessional, I know it wasn't his voice I heard. So he didn't drop round to tell you what he was going to do. He's not as daft as we thought, is he? Anyway, Father, I'm off the case. I'm under investigation for falsifying evidence. One confession too many, you might say. Sergeant to be working in here. I've taken what I need, sir. Then he can bring it back. It's an order, not a suggestion. I'm sorry you've all been moved. This is now discipline and complaints. Off limits of Denton CID. <laughs> yeah, Give us a break. Don't bother. I've heard it all and I'm not impressed. If Inspector Frost clean, then the quicker we get on, the sooner he'll be back. And as far as investigation into the murder of Jeanette Farr's concerned, it may be relevant to what we're looking at. No longer a dental job. I'll be taking over. Sergeant Toulon will be attached to DNC. Uh, hang on a minute, sir. Order, not suggestion. Superintendent Bailey has cleared it with your chief. There's no shortage of loose ends to tie up. Start with Sheridan. Sort out whether he saw her ten days before her death at the Bedford Arms. He still says he didn't. But if there's a hole in his evidence, James Barr's lawyers might pull their boy through. Yeah, I know, sir. Inspector Frost... He's uh... off the case. Remember it. The place is in chaos. They're shifting CID out en masse. What they're doing is setting up a station within a station. No one's to go in there, including me. Yeah, it's not very good for Denton's image, is it, sir? The image of the station is not my chief concern right now. What about you? What have you done about representation? Someone from the Federation, maybe? A, a solicitor, perhaps? No, it's not my style. Jack, try and keep your style. Under control. I don't always like the way you do things, but whatever our disagreements, I have the highest regard for your integrity. And I shall be making that clear at the highest level. Well, don't try too hard, sir, will you? Yes! Mr. Mullet, I'd like to make a start with Inspector Frost. Yes, Superintendent? I'm concerned that Inspector Frost has no communication with any officers here. Are you telling me that when one of my senior officers is suspended, I can't speak to him? Makes it tidier. Let me remind you, Superintendent, that this is my station. I have a responsibility for the people who work here, and I intend to ensure that Inspector Frost feels that he's being treated properly. I expect your investigation to be conducted by the book. And you can rest assured. I know that book very well indeed. In the middle of a current murder investigation, you spent four hours yesterday looking for files on Harriet Barr and Michael King, a case that was wound up ten years ago. Yes, well, when I've got something on my mind, I deal with it. Harriet Barr's death was on my mind. So, having found the files, you then went to see ex-Chief Superintendent Fairclough. Yes. Because I found a statement that contradicted evidence from a main witness against Michael King. Do you know why this piece of evidence didn't reach the courtroom? No. Well, you say it wasn't in the file that was sent to the DPP. But in another file, where it had apparently sat quite undisturbed for nearly ten years. Yes. But when I entered your office, Stephen Mitchell's statement was on your desk. 
Yes, I told you, I found it in an envelope that was hidden in the back of the file. I spoke to Mitchell this morning. Yes, well, I would have done the same thing myself. At Chief Superintendent Fairclough's suggestion. What? Mr Mitchell remembers all this very well. He remembers coming forward to make his statement. He also remembers being told he wouldn't be required to give evidence. When he queried this, he was told to forget he'd ever seen Michael King on the night of Harriet Barr's murder. Unless he wanted to go down for a couple of years too. Who told him that? Inspector Pearson. Oh, come on! There's a bandwagon rolling here, isn't there? Let's get Michael King out of prison and do a couple of coppers at the same time. All we know at the moment is we've got to ask James Barr some questions. Also, there's some questions to be asked about unreliable evidence. Now, I don't know why Inspector Pearson chucked out Mitchell's statement. He may have a good reason to have done so. But I tell you this, you can accuse Pearson of anything, because we buried him last week. That's as may be, Inspector. But if I was worried about a bit of iffy procedure that might be just about to resurface as a miscarriage of justice, making sure it wasn't there wouldn't be a bad move. But it was me that was opening up the case on James Barr's first wife. When you found conflicting evidence, why not go straight to your senior officer? Well, I did. And both Mr Mullet and I agreed that the death of Jeanette Barr raised doubts on the earlier investigation. I'm talking about the point at which you located this conflicting evidence. Evidence you say you knew nothing about at the time. Yes, that's right, and I still you say... You didn't attempt to contact either your DCI or the Chief Superintendent. Instead, you went to see your old governor. Yes. Yes, I went to see what he remembered. The detectives in Chief Superintendent Fairclough's firm were all very loyal to him. How far do you take that loyalty, Inspector? Charlie Fairclough was one of the best detectives this country's ever seen. He put away more serious villains than you've had ladders in your tights. In the days where men were men and women did the typing and made the tea. Just a turn of phrase, Mom. Yes. Well, try this turn of phrase, Inspector. There's more than one dubious conviction down to your old governor. I'd have liked to keep this investigation out of sight until I was ready on all of them. But I've been forced to move, just like you. So, this case comes first. But don't worry, you were around for some of the others. And so was your friend, George Eyre. The man who saw Michael King in Shepley at 10 o'clock. You might be surprised just how often his evidence puts people away in Charlie Fairclough's cases. Then again, you might not. Because it was totally overdrawn. Further up, we've got Italian telemates, and it's built as a walk around Europe. Charlie? I thought they'd have told you not to speak to me. Superintendent Bailey's not going to be amused. Yes, well, it's not the first time I've disobeyed an order to get to the truth. And that's what you're going to tell me. The bloody truth. The King case is down to two conflicting sightings. One from his mate, a thief. The second from a thief who wasn't his mate. Ah, oh, there's a bigger smell. I know what Michael King was. Can you remember a single thing that said King did not kill Harriet Barr? I mean, have you got James Barr confessing to it? They've had a word with George Eyre at Strangeways. The same George Eyre you couldn't place last time I mentioned him. It was his evidence that sent Michael King down and he's sticking to his story. And why shouldn't he? Charlie, that Miss Bailey is a clever detective. She's had a word with George's missus. Oh, she thinks very highly of you. She told her that you often slip her 50 quid, you know, just to help out. You run a pension fund for all your old grasses. George, did me some favours. Oh, yeah. Charlie, you know something. You were the one man who persuaded me that this job was worth doing. And when the crap piles up, I remember what it's like to work with a real copper. I respected you too much then to smell a fit up. Well, I certainly smell one now. Jack, you know what's happened to the force. Sorry, service. The mullets have inherited the earth. The villains are walking out of court with grins all over their faces, ready to sue any copper that breathed on them. 
You don't get results without getting your hands dirty. Now the rules say you're on a charge if you've got dirty fingernails. Or I'd save your long speeches for your memoirs. And what about the villains we can't touch? The ones having lunch with their stockbrokers when there's a murder, an armed robbery, or a ton of coke going through the docks. I got a lot of those people sent down, Jack. Our governor thanked us for it, remember? The politicians thanked us for it. And the good citizens slept easier in their beds. So, some of the evidence wasn't kosher. In that case, the copper who set it up shouldn't complain when he finds himself on the slab. I was doing what everybody wanted us to do, putting villains behind bars, and don't tell me you never moved a bit of evidence when it might do some good. Yeah, all right. All right, so I did bend the rules occasionally, but I never broke them and then threw all the bits away. That Michael King, come on, he was hardly a crime boss, was he? To kill her. Kill her. When he walked from that GBH, he made us look stupid. He made you look stupid. And there was no need to fit him up for murder. What are they going to do to me, Jack? Stop inviting me to reunion dinners. They might have to kick somebody out for the press or the do-gooders. You'll do. But you know, there's never a day goes by when I gaze out the window and wonder what I'm going to do with what's left. The job was everything, even with the family. Now I'm just filling in time. What have you got, Jack? A medal in a drawer? I should think hard before you hold your hand up for the sacrificial lamb. You know where I live? Always keep your door locked, George. People get mugged this way. Jack. You know I'm not allowed to talk to you. I don't want to be landed in it. Well, neither did I, did I? But I am, right up to my neck. I didn't ask to work with them. No, but I'm bloody glad you are. Oh, oh come on, what's green mean? Green, green. Sheridan's adamant he wasn't at the hotel that day. He was at home with the wife. Mm -hmm. Very handy missus for alibis. Mm. Yeah. Oh. So how was Superintendent Bailey? Well, I'd like to be able to say that she's every sort of cow under the sun, but unfortunately, I think she's quite a good copper. Yeah. Now, that Mrs Sheridan gave quite a good performance as a woman scorned, and she's his only alibi. She was dodgy once. You better check the hotel. Oh, I have. Yeah? I've been on the phone. <clears throat> now, the manager clearly knew Mrs. Barr and Sheridan by sight. The description of the man she was with that day is a bit hazy, but it wasn't Sheridan. Hmm. What about the bill? Yeah. I've got it here somewhere, I think. Here we are. It's for a, a meal. A double run for the night. He thinks they left by six that evening. Oh, well, thank you very much, George. Well done. What? Well, so far, all you've given me is she could be having lunch with her bloody bank manager. <laughs> anyway, I'd rather see the real thing. This is a photocopy. Well, I know, but that's what was in her bag. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah. James Barr. Mm -hmm. What do you think of him? Oh, I don't know. Father well, Sullivan's a bit concerned, but... Oh. Yeah. This is dead as far as D.I. Moore is concerned, isn't it? I think I'll keep it. Jack, mm -hmm. if I were you, I'd stay out of this. Well, thank goodness you're not me, George. I uh, will just take it easy, eh? Hmm. Yeah, I think I will. I think, in fact, I'll take it very easy tomorrow. I might go for a drive in the country. Stop off somewhere, you know. Have a spot of lunch. Hmm.
I hope everything was satisfactory, sir. Well, yeah, very nice. The waitress told me you were asking for some information about guests who'd stayed here. I have to say, we're not in the habit of discussing our guests with all and sundry. The Bedford Arms has a reputation as one yes, of the best... Yes, well, most hotels I know who rent rooms by the afternoon have a reputation as a knocking shop. <laughs> I'm a policeman. Uh, sit down. Perhaps we could, um... Perhaps we could take a walk, or... Yeah, all right, just you like. Hmm. <laughs> if someone books a room for the night and checks out early, it's hardly my business. There are emergencies. Mr Ragdale, Jeanette Barr's been coming here over a period of months with a man she was having an affair with. They left at six o'clock every evening. Now, what do you call that? A predictable emergency? If you already have the information you want, I really don't see the point of this. I spoke to your sergeant yesterday about Mrs. Barr's last visit here. With a different man? Yes. Hmm. No, obviously, I was as shocked as anyone by news of Mrs. Barr's tragic death. Yeah, I bet you were. Uh, I bet she was a good tipper, wasn't she? Did Mrs. Barr usually ask for a copy of the bill? No. But she did on this occasion. Now, Mrs. Barr's only slightly less disorganised than I am. Why would she want a copy of the bill when she's already got the original? Mrs. Barr always settled the account herself, but on this occasion, the gentleman did. Cash. She asked me to give her a copy of the bill when they left that afternoon, without the gentleman knowing. Really? Thank you, Mr. Ragdale. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. I've been looking at this uh, confession you gave me. It doesn't say very much, does it? Never thought of getting advice on your mood swings, Inspector. You what? So, you're back on the case. No, no, I'm still suspended. This bit's a bit interesting. Salva me fons piatis. Latin. Hmm? Yeah, piatatis. It's from the old funeral mass. Save me, oh, source of pity, something like that. I didn't think you did that anymore, though, did you? Yeah, it must be somebody with a very long memory or someone who spends a lot of time listening to Verdi's Requiem. But no, it's not what you'd expect. From James Barr? No. Tell me something, Father. What makes you think that James Barr didn't do it? You see, I can't speak to anyone. I can't speak to my officers or any of the witnesses, and that includes James Barr. But I know he talked to you the other night for a long time about all sorts of things. James knows nothing about the murder. And he's genuinely appalled that the death of his first wife is being investigated again. I'd like to know what he said, exactly what he said. Look, you know I'm trying to help. It doesn't mean I can just go and repeat his confession. I can get suspended too, you know. The other day, you were pouring out guilt after someone came in and asked forgiveness because they were going to kill someone. Well, maybe they went out and did just that. I don't know. Maybe you should have said something to stop them. I don't know. Tell you what I do know. James Barr is probably going to go to prison. Now, if you have a reason why he shouldn't, you better decide whether you're going to help me find the truth or not. Priests, is it? Yeah. Before I got the priest colours, I thought they'd just, just beam us straight up. <coughs> yeah, the 
church has a job retiring us. You lose your parish, you lose your family. So that happens here in the late 40s. What celibacy really means. Not sex. A woman that you love, that you're gonna grow old with. Kids. Yes, well, you don't have a monopoly on that. Anyway. Father Clark, this is Inspector Frost. How do you do, Father? You're the policeman who wants to know what people say in confession. Well, I have to tell you, it's none of your business. Are you a Catholic? Uh, no. They say that ignorance is no excuse in the eyes of the law. It's no excuse in the eyes of the Lord, either. Yes. Father, I don't suppose... I gather that what Father Sullivan wants me to talk to you about is something that was said to him in confession. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't said to me in confession. Not that I've any idea what was said to Father Sullivan. But if we haven't too much idea of what we're talking about, well, there can't be any sin in that. We'd like some tea for the whiskey. About James Barr, father. James was an altar boy. When I could get hold of him, he always had something infinitely more interesting to do. His wife said that he was a bit, well, a bit obsessive about his religion. You're saying, but not when he was a kid, though. At 11, this world is infinitely more interesting than the next. Yeah. What about his brother? Alec? Yes, Alec. He was the religious one. That's right, I put him in the choir. I had to find something for him to do. I felt uncomfortable with all his piety. A boy of that age should be looking for mischief, not telling his rosary. Uh, what you're saying was that James didn't want to know about the church, yet you couldn't get Alec out of the place. I mean, surely you've got that the wrong way around. I was booked in for senility, but it hasn't come through yet, Inspector. But I do need more prompting. Things are starting to get a little vague. So how did they get on together, I mean, James and Alec? There were problems. I think the bars were having financial difficulties. It all hit Alec very hard. And uh, his behavior was difficult, very difficult. What happened, Father? I became very jealous of his brother. It started with toys being broken, books torn up. And I believe James's pet was killed. Then he set light some clothes and gutted James's bedroom. It was all very hard for the family. <clears throat> How long did this go on for? Well, Alec spent some time at a special school. He came back a spotty adolescent, but still with too much piety and not enough faith. And healthily, more interested in girls than what his brother was up to. Yeah, go on. Was there uh, still something wrong? He made a point of taking James's girlfriends off him. But he grew out of it eventually. He'd still sneak into confession if he felt he'd done something bad, thinking I wouldn't know who it was. And always insisting that I conduct the proceedings in Latin.
Thanks for coming, Charlie. Yes, well, that doesn't mean there's anything to say. Are you off to see Ms Bailey? That's right. I'm not going to say much to her either. Practically nothing, in fact. No, you just got to keep your mouth shut, that's all. That's about the size of it. Mm. You and Alec Barr. You really believe he did it? Twice, Charlie. Twice. This is where we found Jeanette Barr's body. You used to return to the scene of the murder, remember? I often do it. You know, these investigations, they can drag on for months, years sometimes, and you tend to lose sight of what it's all about, how it all started. It started with a real man or woman, a body whose life has been beaten out of it. That's why we're here, for that man. Or that woman. I know you've been talking to a priest, Jack, but sermons are not your style. If I don't get back on the case, Alec Barr is gonna walk. I'm down to Bailey now. She's not close enough. We've got one final crack at him, that's all. And I need to take it. So you want me to go and get you off the hook? Tell Bailey it was all down to me. Well, it was all down to you, Charlie. That woman's body wouldn't have been down there if you hadn't screwed up the first time around. If you hadn't wanted to fit someone up instead of carrying out a proper investigation. You might not think that you owe Michael King anything for those ten years. But you think about those two dead women. This is unfinished business, Charlie. Let me finish it. I have to point out that you're entitled to legal representation. Next time round, Superintendent. You, stand over there. As far as this session is concerned, I'm prepared to make a brief statement which you can consider on or off the record. There's nothing off the record in any investigation of mine. Well, that'll probably put very serious constraints on your career as a detective. I'm prepared to cooperate with your inquiry. However, cooperation brings conditions. I'm not here to make deals. I can create enough confusion to have you running around in circles till you've missed two promotions and I've gone to meet my maker. Or to listen to threats. If there was any error of judgment under my authority, I'd take full responsibility. The only officer I confided in fully is now dead. My cooperation means you drop any possible charges against any detectives who may have worked for me, like Jack Frost. Jack always played it straight. I can't agree to that. You'll have to find someone who can. Oh, by the way, Superintendent, next time I expect someone of my own rank to be present. That's the correct procedure. I don't think retirement precludes that. I'm sure I'll hear from you. OK, Mr Fairclough, you have your deal. We'll start taking your evidence at 0900 hours tomorrow. You know where to find us at FHQ. Welcome back, Mr Frost. Thank you. Nice to see you back, sir. Thank you. Welcome back. Hello, Joe. Nice to see you again. Mr Frost. Welcome back, Mr. Frost. Nice to Thank see you. you. Good morning, Joe. Good to see you. All right, George. You're a lucky man, Inspector. Oh, is that what we say now to suspects when they're found innocent? You're lucky. I thought you'd have been relieved that uh, my only crime was believing in Charlie Fairclough. But there again, I mean, what's one old copper who's taken the wrong road? Not many brownie points in that, is there? Not like uncovering a network of corruption. It's only Fairclough's word. And he was telling the truth. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Really, the truth. That's where our loyalties are. Not in clocking up convictions. But there again, if the truth doesn't suit you, you can always do what Charlie Fairclough did. He invented it. 
and no one noticed. You have to trust people that you work with, unless you have a very good reason not to. I mean, there's no other way. So I'm going to find the truth. That's what's going to get Michael King out of jail and put away a murderer. And not by what your opinion is of me. Well, well, well done, Jack. Well, 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 well done, Jack. Yes, it's all right. Come on, get back to work. It's not ladies' night at the Masonic Lodge. <laughs> Mr. Mullet. Superintendent. Goodbye. Darling? Yep? It's Inspector Frost. You're back, Inspector. If you think you can just walk in here and talk to James. No, no, it's uh, you I wanted to chat to. Uh, thank you very much, Mrs. Barr. Yes, well, the thing is, I don't think that your brother killed his wife. You've arrested Sheridan? No, no, Mr. Sheridan is innocent. He's got an alibi. Your brother would have had an alibi, too, had he gone to Bristol on your instructions. Mr. Sheridan wasn't the only recipient of Jeanette's favours, was he? Eh? Having an affair with your sister-in-law isn't very nice. But that's more in Father Sullivan's area than mine. Your brother and your wife, they don't know, I presume. Inspector don't try and protest. Got a witness from the hotel. It's not what it seems. No, well, it's not for me to judge, is it, sir? I mean, we must face these things ourselves. Mia culpa, as they used to say. Anyway, can you tell me where you were the night your sister-in-law was killed? I was here. My wife was at a charity dinner, my children were at a party. Are you reduced to throwing accusations at anyone who spent the evening alone? No, not anyone, Mr. Barr. Shall I tell you what I've got? Now, I don't know what happened the first time around with Harriet, but you got away with it. You seem to be getting away with it the second time around, but be that as it may. Let's look at it another way, shall we? We've got proof that you spent the afternoon in bed with your sister-in-law. Now, suppose, just suppose that your brother found out that would be a pretty powerful motive for him to want to kill her. Now, she was a big shareholder in the company. She was trying to screw money out of Bar Electronics. That's another reason why James would want to kill his wife. So, you see, if I can't prove anything else, and you won't budge, I'm afraid your brother James is looking at somewhere between 10 to 15 years inside. How do you think he will survive jail? I mean, you, you got through that special school, didn't you? But they'll eat him alive. My brother is innocent, Inspector. And so am I. All this... This just shows how desperate you are. You don't believe a jury will convict James either. If there's any more of this, I'll have to bring in my solicitor. There will be more of this. You know that.
right, Bar. This is Father Sullivan. The, the, the thing is, I um, I need to speak to you before I go go to the police. What do you mean? What's all this about, Father? I think you know that, Mr. Barr. I know my family is under a great deal of pressure. I'd have hoped even the modern church would give support and prayer. Instead of which you phone me with some bizarre threat. I am not threatening you. You said you had to talk to me before you talk to the police. I don't know what nonsense you've dreamed up, but a priest... Mr. Barr, I know it was you who came into my confessional the day before James' wife was killed. I know it was your voice. You said you were going to kill someone. I'm quite prepared to testify to that if necessary. But the best thing for you to do is to go to the police and tell them what happened. What sort of priest are you? And what sort of brother are you? Anything I said is sacred. It's a sacrament. You bastard. You are not going to destroy my family. I wouldn't let that cow, Jeanette. And I won't let you. That's why I had to kill her. All right, it's over, Mr. Barr. I said it's over. She didn't care about James, about the family. A money-grubbing tart. He'd given her shares in the company in her name. His shares didn't tell me. Our American partners were ready to buy them. Strip our assets, junk us. It was business trouble. She was using that. She wanted a million pounds to sell back the shares, and so what if she broke us? And the affair? There was no affair. Just that day, I met her in the hotel to try and persuade her to sell the shares for a more reasonable sum. I thought she'd agreed to everything. Playing me. I'd always had. She could look at you and make you feel. It was blackmail. That's why she did it. You see, in the end, I didn't have a choice. So, it was a question of business. What about your brother's first wife? That wasn't business, was it? That was jealousy. Because that was the one thing of your brother's that you couldn't make your own. So you took it from him. Hey, George, shut up! Wake up! Get it! Oh, 
powerful and mysterious God. We commend to you Alec, your servant, God, out the sins he has committed through human beings. As we ask for Jesus Christ. Thank you.